some people are surprised when they discover that the first time the word church is mentioned in the New Testament is fairly far along in the ministry of Jesus. Matthew chapter 16 is where we find this. Matthew chapter 16, I want to read the text, and then we'll draw out a few points that are very relevant for churches today. Matthew 16, starting in verse 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. This is a foundational passage in regard to our understanding of the church. First time, as I mentioned before, first time the word church is used in the New Testament, first time it's given to us through the mouth of Jesus Christ himself as he talks about the church that he's going to build. And I want to just draw out three applicational points for us that's very relevant for us today as Christians, especially in relationship to our churches. And here they are. Churches are built on the identity of Jesus. His name, his agenda, his power. The Bible is very clear that Jesus is the head of the church. He's the chief cornerstone of the church. He is the one who's building his church, as this passage says. And in Colossians chapter 1, it says that in all things, he might have the preeminence. Jesus is the focus of the church. He's the center of the church. He's the head of the church. It's really all about Jesus. And as he is building his church, through his people, he's building it on his name. It's the church of Christ. It's, it's Christ's church. No matter what the name of your local church is that you are affiliated with or you attend or you're a member of, it has to be Christ in the center. The name's not as important as it's being led in his name. It's representing his reputation. It's representing his values. The word name in the scripture refers to the character of the person, the values of the person. And so when it talks about praying in Jesus' name in the Bible, it's meaning we're praying in a way that is in, ally- is in accord with who Christ is and what, are, what he represents. As he's building his church, he's building on his agenda. He has an agenda for the church, and we need to set aside our preferences, our own agendas, and submit to the agenda of Jesus. And it's built on his authority. He tells us when he, right before he left and ascended to the Father in heaven, he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, and I say to you, go and make disciples. We go with his authority, with his power. Number two, churches are always in transition because Jesus is always building his church. Sometimes someone will say to someone, how's your church doing? Well, we're in a period of transition. What they mean by that is they did things a certain way for a certain amount of time, and then now they've reached a point where they're changing the way they do same things, and maybe it's a, some major changes. So they say, we're in transition. It's a, it's a season of transition. It's a season of change. But the truth of the matter is churches are always in transition because God is always at work through the church, and he's always changing the people of the church, and the church is the people. Jesus is changing me. Sometimes he changes me faster than I wish he would. Sometimes he changes me slower than I wish he would, but he's in charge of that. He's sovereign. My sanctification is in his hands, but I'm always changing because people are always changing because Jesus is changing them. And he's changing us into his image. We're being conformed increasingly to his image. And we make up the church, so we're all growing together. And growth means change. So that's transition. We're always in transition. Jesus is always transitioning his church. And so as you pray about your church, and sometimes you want for things to stay the same, you like the comfort level of this is the way we've always done it, this is the way we are, this is who we are. Remember, 
Churches are always in transition transition because Jesus is building his church. And if your church is not changing, not advancing, not improving, not growing, you're stuck, maybe you're not with on Jesus' agenda. Maybe you need to repent and put yourself in a position saying, Jesus, hey, I'm willing to change. I'm willing to grow. I know you're building your church. And it may not be comfortable for me, but it's for your glory and for the good of others. Third thing. Churches are advancing, not retreating. Now, I'm a huge sports fan. I was a multi-sport athlete through my middle school and high school years. I've always followed sports. I love sports. I fully recognize, and I've quoted this many times, defense wins championships. But I tell you what, offense is a lot more fun. In most cases, offense is a lot more fun. But when it comes to the church, this isn't a sport. This is real life. And the church is not to always be on defense, although there's times where we are on defense. I'm not saying defense isn't important. We have to stand firm when the enemy attacks us. We have to be we have to be bearing the armor of God to be able to stand firm when he attacks. And sometimes we do have to defend. But the the point Jesus is making here is we we're not a church who just is always in retreat. We are advancing. The kingdom of is, is advancing, and it's advancing through his people, the church. The gates of hell, the text says here, shall not prevail. The gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Gates are fixed. They're not moving around. We are advancing into the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of light is the one that is expanding, not the kingdom of darkness. Now, I know sometimes in certain countries and certain cultures, it seems like the kingdom of darkness is expanding and the kingdom of light is shrinking. But Jesus' church is always taking ground. Do you recognize... If you really study your scriptures on this, I think you would agree with me. We're always rescuing people from the kingdom of darkness and bringing them into the kingdom of light. But you cannot take, you cannot permanently take a person out of the kingdom of light and put them in the kingdom of darkness. It's impossible. Jesus always keeps his own. And so we're the one that's growing, we're the one that's advancing the church, not the kingdom of darkness. The gates of hell will not prevail against us. Now that's good news. We're on the winning team and we will win. So three things out of that passage on the church. Great reminders as we think about how we serve God in his church to advance his kingdom for his glory.